you, Dum Dum. Welcome back to Two Dummies in a Microphone with John. Lucas is still out saving the world. Uh, so we got special guest Ramon Resop, uh, another brother from another mother. Uh, served with him for a couple of months while we were out on deployment. Uh, now he's a 22-year veteran fixing to retire. And why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, Ramon. John, man, it's a pleasure to be here, brother. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you uh, bringing me on. It's crazy because I remember us briefly talking about this a little bit. Back in the day, you got, I, I actually just listened to your first one, the That's funny. show episode. Oh, yeah, you got to you yeah, get yeah. off of that one. The audio on that one is terrible. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that. But it, it's, geez, it's amazing to see how it's coming together for you, man. So oh, I, I appreciate it. that. And, and I really appreciate you, you having me on, man. But um, no, I mean, I guess, our, our, you know, just going back from where our cross paths, our paths crossed, you know, on uh, doing our thing on deployment. Um, I guess uh, I guess I'll start from the beginning. But I grew up in Oregon, man. Portland, Oregon's where I grew up, born and raised. Nice. Um, came up from a, you know, a pretty chill, nothing crazy background. You know, I, I played basketball my whole life. Man, I just, um, you know, just uh, I was a good kid. Didn't do, <laughs> I never. I mean, in real talk, man, I didn't. Uh, I really just stayed out of trouble. I was just kind of came to my small group of friends and made sure I was playing basketball every day. If I had a basketball, I was good to go. That's all I needed to be. <laughs> like, that's all I ever did was <laughs> school and basketball. Um, decided to uh, do something different. I, I don't really come from a military background. So no nobody in my family was in the military. My dad had wanted to be in the military, um, but he couldn't because at the time, you know, this uh, when they have flat feet, right? Oh, yeah. Couldn't get in. Yeah, because you had flat feet. So my dad fell in that category, so he could never join. But I just wanted to do something different. And I told him, told him I wanted to join the Navy, and they're like, you know, my mom, of course, she went high to the right. She didn't like that idea <laughs> whatsoever, man. You know, but my dad was like, Dad, man, kill it, do it. You know, he's like, go kill it, get after it. So yeah, I joined back in '97, July '97. Yeah, I wasn't even in eighth grade yet. <laughs> old yeah. <as> fuck. <laughs> yeah i'm old bro i'm old uh yeah i came so i came in 97 uh it was about a year out of high school i broke my elbow so i was in you know that delayed entry program yeah but um so i ended up being that for a really long time because i broke my elbow with downhill skiing on mount hood and i had to get two pins put in my elbow i was only 18 good nice. um and then they said you know you've got like eight weeks to be able to do a, a physical fitness test assessment or you can't come in the Navy. So I was just super determined then, you know, just to get this to go. So I was able to, you know, get through the rec recovery and made it. And uh, yeah, so I joined the Navy. And I, in real time, I, I didn't want to do anything but be a corpsman, be a doc. It's the only thing I wanted to do in the Navy. I didn't want to do anything else. And, um, I spent, I mean, you're familiar with like kind of docs kind of play a couple of different roles in the Navy, you know. Oh, yeah. Marine, yeah, you can Marines, eat, yeah. Marines all over the place. And so yeah. um, with Marines, not, you know, for our listeners that really don't know about kind of what corpsmen do, but uh, Marine Corps, they don't really have, they don't have their own medical asset or like job in the Navy. So they use Navy corpsmen. And so that's kind of where I fell into. So. It was pretty trippy because my my dad's best friend was a was a Vietnam Marine. Oh dang! And he when he found out I was joining the Navy, you know, Mike was this like mountain of a man, dude. He was so <laughs> big, right? And I was this seventeen year old impressionable young kid, just kind of excited about do something new. And he found out I was joining the Navy. And he was like, "There's only one thing you're gonna do in the Navy." And I, and I was like. <laughs> Okay, but okay, life, you know? he's like, you're gonna be a corpsman, right? And he just proceeded to tell me about life as a corpsman with the Marines. Yeah. And you know, it's just, it was the most exciting thing I think I'd ever heard in my life at that point. So that's why I was so sold on being uh, a corpsman from the moment I, I, I was joining the Navy. You know, I think there was even a point in time when I went to the recruiting office before you're supposed to leave, you know, that final depth where you say mm -hmm. bye your family and stuff. Well, I got there and uh, I remember my recruiter was like, dude, they don't have corpsmen available for you. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm out. And he's, I was like, call my dad. Call my dad right now. He's going to get me. 
And he said, well, no, 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 wait. You know, he doesn't want me to go. Right? Yeah. He's trying to keep you there. Yeah. Technically, you're not anything until you're it, gone at boot camp, yeah. right? So you've like sworn in and yeah. you're on your way. So I was still in the free and clear, man. But it's like, if you get me Corman, then I'll go. But, but if not, I'm not. And he did what ever recruiters do, you know, and he was able to score away and got me Corman. But I didn't end up leaving for like three or four months later. Oh, dang. So you so went through that went night. Back home. Oh, yeah. good night, man. <laughs> Said all my goodbyes. You know, all those emotions. Oh, yeah. Goodbyes, you know, yeah, like, all upset. And then I, uh, I just, yeah. So I left and I came back three months later, joined, and I did exactly what I wanted as I wanted to do. I, I went to Corman school and, and then you know you had a wish list where you could yeah. be like you know, what do you want to do and you actually they did what you want to do you know so yeah was, they actually got uh, the pick yeah and it was first marine division second marine division third marine division it was the only thing i chose and sure enough i scored first marine division so i was on my way to southern california and uh with infantry marines you know spent a lot of time with uh the cool guys, scout snipers and infantry stuff did a lot of amazing just the, everything i wanted to do i got to do it and then a deployment in there then i punched out to florida okay that's cool for i was in there for a minute you know did a lot of uh health promotion stuff there so actually it was hmm. i think that was kind of the beginning of like kind of where i am today yeah really really kind of started there i think because this is where i began to learn at a very young age about how to influence people and how to really kind of connect to people and help them and yeah. really besides just being the tough, you know, with the Marines and putting band-aids, giving motion, change your socks, drink water deal. Right? <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was, I actually got to how, you know, really play a part in people's lives and help them get nutritionally and help nutrition, physical fitness, uh, stress management. And I was just a young in then, you know, yeah. so it was all, I'm many years beyond that now, but <clears throat> But that was my whole job, right? And I and I can remember like my boss was a civilian, and he was like, you know, working out during the day and stuff like that. You know, the Navy has their way of right. You got to work yeah. out in the morning or the you know, but it's part of the work day. In his eyes, it was like, man, I want every single person in the world to come to you <laughs> for fitness. And he's like, if you have to work out four times a day, I don't care. If I as long as <laughs> as, long, as long as everybody's coming to you in this entire hospital command, then that's all I want. And so yeah. that's, I did that man, for geez, four years, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was like your short duty. That was like my short duty. Yeah. 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 And I punched out on another deployment for the initial invasion in Iraq. So we were first boots in the ground and first trauma hospital inside Iraq, oh, uh, wow. which was just, just a gnarly tour. Um, I can imagine. Yeah. It, you know, when you're on the border for the initial invasion, it was just so intense. Now we're jumping in bunkers and we got like, you know, missile attack, Good missile night, launch. Night, man. It's, pretty it's, like real, it's like real life Call of Duty out there. It was, you know, it was, it was pretty good. And you know what's nuts is that we weren't like the gunslingers of that portion of the war, man. We mm -hmm. were like 100% the caretaker scene. So set up this tent hospital that had never been set up before. Now it's, you know, now it's evolved into this expeditionary medical facilities. It's just insane right now, but we were the test unit for it, man. So it was a 10 hospital with air conditioners, CBs were attached to us now. So they rolled in and, you know, just the awesome badasses that CBs are came in and um, we helped so many people, man. We saved so many lives. Just, we we're doing craniotomies in the desert. Man. Jesus. Like, it's That's crazy neurosurgeons nuts. yeah it's so funny we had two neurosurgeons man that were like i think they were reservists but they were both fulberg captains yeah and, but they were like 65 years old man they were just like <laughs> so while every they're like we call them the grumpy, we call them the grumpy old man but these guys were neurosurgeons man right so and they everyone was jumping in bonkers and we had missile attacks and shit these dudes were like when it's my time, it's my time. So they just like <laughs> scurried along through the sand. They didn't even care. They were just oh, like, that's funny. Everyone else was scared out of their minds. But then these, old, these dudes at that age were like, Bro, when it's time to go, it's my time. Like, I am worried about it anyway. I don't, I don't need to move any faster, which is just awesome. But anyway, so that deployment was just a wild deployment, you know. Uh, 
had played a large part, big impact on my career for the rest of my career, to be honest with you. Um, oh, I can imagine. Then, you know, yeah, just seeing children and women and families, just seeing the real human part to war was just really, uh, it, was, it was quite an experience. Yeah. Something that I don't know that I was ready for at the time, but, you know, since then I've, I've really gotten the help that I needed to kind of get through everything that I've, that I remember and all the bad stuff you see stuff and it's detrimental, it's traumatic. And anybody, yeah. sees, you know, that shit's, stuff, shit's traumatic. Dude. So yeah. I got a lot of help though, man. I, I have finally ditched ego and got the help I needed to get and stopped being a tough guy because it was actually bringing me down and making me any more tougher than I thought I was. Right. Yeah. So I'm really happy. I did, so I got the help I need, but you know, so that deployment went on dude, and then I came back and did the same thing, helping people, uh, at the hospital. Then I went on another deployment to, to uh, Guantanamo Bay to Cuba. Hmm. That was another wild deployment, but did that one for six, six months or so. And came home, uh, Punched out back over to the Marine Corps side of the house. Got to do some pretty high speed stuff, some high speed Marines, uh, Anglico Marines. Hmm. You know who Anglico is. Yes. You remember your guys' is, this is the crazy part. Like when I was on board and I was in the turret, whenever we were shooting, yeah. and there was a sticker on there that was first Anglico. Yeah. Yeah. That was my command. <laughs> and I went to freaking. I went to war with, so I ended up yeah. going back to Iraq for 2005, 2006, doing some just that was more that was the gunslinger, you know, that was the stuff, yeah, kicking indoors, shooting, you know, doing all that cool stuff. But, um, but that was so ironic. I remember being on the ship and I saw the stickers, like, you guys work, yeah, I all did it, you know, yeah. So, but uh, Will, I remember Will was like, oh, oh, no, I was tripping out, oh, yeah, man. There. Um, but then. Came back, you know, I came back from that deployment. Dude, I, I think I told you, I got out of the Navy for a while. I yeah, no, I remember Navy. you I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, I got out of the Navy, I think, in 2006. Yeah. Uh, I had these, like, yes, it's funny, but I was, so I, I don't know, but I ended up, when I came back from my, Iraq and that deployment, I actually got featured in, like, Muscle Fitness Magazine. Oh, really? I this. No, yeah, I didn't. I was, no, like, no. This is... Yeah, bro, real Sneak talk. <laughs> I don't like you. I'm just real talk. Look at this. Dude. Yo, that's, oh, that's me, bro. Funny. That's me right there. <laughs> but uh, that's so funny. I, bro, I had like these funny aspirations that I was going to be like some, you know, cover model or some <laughs> shit. Right. And I was like, that's, you know, obviously that shit didn't happen. I was stupid for thinking that. But, you know, I was. It's a dream, like, though, I, man. Yeah. I was like, claim to fame for like a a month or something or whatever yeah. but um yeah so anyway so i got out and i actually became i did uh, i did a lot of firefighting i moved i moved to florida back to pensacola because i was okay. in socal when i was at the marine so back to florida did uh i was out for about two and a half years uh got florida Florida firefighter certified uh i was like all i wanted to do is be a firefighter there for that time uh and i and i was really more of the time man that i got the most help that i needed dealing with PTSD and things like that. Uh, yeah. That time out was really good for me. I yeah. Everybody, really everybody needs to, a break every once in a while. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's exactly what it was for me. Really time to sort out my, get my head sorted out and really come to terms with everything. But uh, then I proceeded to come back in. So I came back in active duty 2009, uh-huh. uh, where I went straight to independent duty corpsman school down in San Diego then I took minesweepers from there of all things. You yeah. know, I uh, <laughs> took shit. I took ships, you know, with this big old long background. You know? yeah. um, even when I was in out, I was in the reserves with um, a reserve Marine Corps unit or force recon unit. And uh, so that's like all I knew, you know, and then I do school and then I was like, oh, I'll do something more challenge. I think I was challenged because all this the instructors were kind of like, man, you're wired for something different. Like, you're not wired for ships, man. Ship, <laughs> Navy, blue, this side may be something different, man. Like, it's something way completely different. Yeah, you know? I know. And uh, I was like, but I pretty much in a sense, I I thought that maybe, maybe this is like their leadership technique on me, like some reverse psychology shit or something. <laughs> but uh, I pretty much felt like they thought I couldn't do it, you know? Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm that guy that is not 
you tell me I can't do something. I assure you. You got to prove you're wrong for it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever it takes and I'm going to make it happen, you know, and I've kind of always been that way my whole life, you know, but uh, yeah. So then um, let's see, took my sweeps, deployed a whole bunch on five different ships in three years. Uh, What did I do after that? After that, I went to uh, uh, Clint Ventura, California. Yeah. 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 Little jam, dude. <laughs> if you don't know Port Wainini, whoever's been in Port Wainini, it's legit. Oh it yeah, no, so we went up there for we went up there for a little bit, and it's it's nice. I love it. It's not barbers right up the corner. Yeah, I mean, I loved it that I ran. Just besides, I mean, besides the four or five traffic, like that's the most horrible thing in the world. Yeah. But uh, L.A., you know, if you don't have to go to L.A., don't. But that's all. I, that's all I yeah. to LA. But when I ran, it, <laughs> some dude, I love it. I didn't like it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I spent spent a couple years up there, and I ended up making my way back down to San Diego, where I took on the new. I was pre commissioning the new ships, the Zumwalt class ships, so DDG one thousand one. You know, uh, that was an epic, epic, epic tour. Um, our namesake was uh, the Michael Montour. Special operator Michael Montour. Yeah. Yeah, that was just like the most one of the most amazing tours I've ever had by far. Just honoring his name and who he was and his actions and, and his teammates and everything that he did. It was just an epic tour. Loved it. So I did that for a couple of years. Uh, last one. Oh, in the meantime, I did the Zumwalt too. So the first one, I bailed yeah. on the first one. <laughs> went to that deployment, right? Came back from that one. Uh, and then I broke my hip. Remember I told you yep. about what I yep. broke my hip? So I, bro- <laughs> I broke my hip doing a memorial race. Uh, bone frog like obstacles <laughs> yeah. broke my hip there uh come to find out you know i did <laughs> it's funny i broke my hip and then so i did a race like a second obstacle you know i got body slammed or whatever and i finished the race <laughs> like 30 obstacles later a couple miles in the mountains right in berkshire hills and in, in pennsylvania i think it was or something. Uh-huh. and uh uh two day went back home to maine i was in bath maine and yeah. then Two, two days of duty of uh, standing down there forever and finally i couldn't pick my leg up so i went to the hospital and they're like sir you know your hips broken right? <laughs> I, uh, no i did not know that <laughs> how are you even walking i was like well, i don't know i don't know i didn't know what to tell them, you know but they were just shocked and so i ended up that you know that i had broken hips so i couldn't be on a ship so they pulled me off yeah. and you know, I got sent back to San Diego. Surgeon was like, "Man, I don't know how you." Oh, and so right before that, I did a natural bodybuilding competition. So that's why, yeah. So right before the race, like a month before the race, I had just done a six-month prep competition prep where I lost like seventy-five pounds, boss. I mean, Jesus. I had, yeah, I just mad, shredded, mad. Oh yeah, I I did. Right. No coach, no nothing. It's legit, man. I had no. Uh, oh, YouTube is so beautiful, <laughs> dude. Uh, you I can find anything YouTube. on YouTube. I've, I I love YouTube. You, you can do anything on YouTube. I love it, right? So, so I so when I see the surgeon, right, I'm like the most leanest I've ever been. You know, I just like an animal, and the surgeon was like, "This doesn't make sense. Your your X-rays, <laughs> your X-rays look like you're an 80 year old man." You have the worst arthritis in your hips. <laughs> what, what you know? What have you What have you been doing for twenty years? And I like, you know, it's like everything, weird, man. It yeah. is everything, you know. And he even showed. He's like, there might be indicators on here that you broke your hip prior. Jesus. I was like, how is this? Uh, and he's like, did you have any major accidents or anything? I say, well, jump school. I went to the jump school, like yeah. airborne school, you know. And uh, and I was, I told him about my first jump, and how I was like. I was the biggest idiot and it was the most catastrophic thing I ever <laughs> felt. I landed and I was like crying as I'm like getting pulled in the dirt and shit, dude. Like it was the worst. I did everything wrong. It was the worst fuck. But if there's any impact that I ever maybe that was it. But um uh, ended up saying you need your you need your hip totally replaced. So uh, I was 40 and I got my right hip completely replaced. Went oh, in, wow. they did it. They, you know, are you familiar yeah. with what a total hip replacement is? Like, yeah, go in there and replace you know, the ball like and all they, that. They yeah. So, your femur, right? Your femur goes into your pelvis. Yep. They cut off the end of your femur. They, they put like a, a stem, or like yeah. pour some ball in a cup. Yeah. So, yeah. that's pretty much. And 
that, you know, that was another recovery. That was just incredible. I really did. I really missed, it was an amazing recovery. Everything I did to make it through that. And then, um, <laughs> he was also like, you need your other hip replaced as well. <laughs> you can wait for a while and get done now. And I mean, really, I was in great shape still. Right. So I was like, man, fuck it. Let's, let's do it. So I got my left hip replaced. <laughs> so it was just four months. Since, yeah. I think it was like four months later to that day. I got my left hip replaced. And I just took all the lessons that I learned from the first four month recovery yeah. for the other hip that this one was a breeze boss. Like yeah. I just nailed it. I was so nice. deliberate, so <laughs> right on with everything I did. I ran a race, I ran a mountain race man, like shit, six weeks or eight weeks after I was on the get out of the town. Heart, the Heartbreak Ridge race. Good yeah, night. And, yeah. Yeah. I call that race the best last place finish ever it was the best <laughs> i came in dead last like there was only a few minutes left before they were going to put me in a truck and i was relentless i ran the entire time nobody knew that i had just had a hip, a hip replacement hip, yeah a hip replace right but the, i remember the cars were behind me and like the, the night, race man. coaches or the race sheriffs, whatever you want yeah. to call them, were behind me and they're like, sir, are you? I was like, I haven't stopped running. Leave me alone. I'm, <laughs> I'm not getting in the truck. Yeah. I promise you, I'm not getting in that truck. And I finished that race, man. And it was, it was like an incredible achievement just for myself. Like, it was just to, get, to actually complete that, you know, it was. And I never ran since. I never ran since. Like, hmm. Surgeons are like, dude, <laughs> really, it was a, more of a peace of mind that I was yeah. going to be able to function again in my life, right? Like, that's what I really needed, I think. And, and it was just that physical achievement I needed, you know, which is more of a mental achievement for me. But yeah. get, getting through that just kind of just set the tone for, you know, that was, we're talking, dude, that was in February of eight, 18. Uh-huh. Is that right? So February 18th? Yeah. Mm. Is it 18? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, that was, so I spent a year in limbo recovering from those both those hip replacements. Um, working down in San Diego still, uh, inspecting ships, assessing mm. all that. Uh, and then let's see. Then I got sent to Bahrain, man. Yeah. That's when I was in Bahrain. You remember that? Yeah. That was a that was a you know, that wasn't the I didn't get dealt the best hand of cards on that deal but yeah whatever. it is what it is and uh i ended up going to the middle east for a little over about 18 months yeah and then in the middle of that i was on the ship i got i got, I got a 24 <laughs> hour notice that said uh we need to see now yeah. and i was like how soon they said tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> so i was on a helo it literally yeah. went like that it was uh 24 hours later i'm on a helo and I'm rolling out to you guys yeah. in the water, man. And uh, you know, but again, man, and, and you know what I told you, it was you guys were exactly what I needed. Man. It was just epic being with you guys and your team of of, cheat, of leaders and sailors. You guys were just legit. I I love every single one third one hundred percent thoroughly. Enjoyed every single ounce of it. It was oh, yeah. truly uh, exactly what I needed. It was my last, you know. Last yeah, ride, hoorah, yeah. Call it. yeah, it really, it really was. And I think I told everybody, a lot of people, I was like, That this is the best Ramon Resub <laughs> ever. I was like, This is a culmination of 23 years I brought to right now, and that's why yeah. I unleashed it. And I, you remember, I unleashed it. Oh, yeah, you guys, man, you're going yeah, you know? and so, uh, yeah, dude, I came back from that, right? Spent about 18 more, no, uh. I don't know, eight weeks back. In yeah, it wasn't that rain. I was back home. Yeah. But you talked about... Yeah. yeah, but you talked about, like, your determination, like, with the race. Uh, what kept you motivated? Like, you you got out the Navy for a little bit. You were with the Marines for a while. Like, what kept you motivated day-to-day, war-to-war, uh, -war, I mean, and just kept you going? Um, I mean, there's a couple different things. Like, remember I told you that I, you know, I, the way I take a challenge, man, is, is I don't think it's like most 
people, to be honest. Like, challenge me, or if I challenge myself, I don't have to have someone say, Ramon, you can't do something, right? Like, I, I kind of create these challenges in my own brain, man. And I say, like, you can't do, you know, or no, I, I'll set something up in my head. It's almost that I can't achieve it. And then I just, I fly, I just like flip a switch and I just, boom, I do whatever it takes. I'm, I'm super deliberate, but bro, I love the Navy, man. I love every ounce of it, man. I truly did. Oh, I, yeah. I, I loved, I loved everything that we did. I loved every, as much as there were the hard times and the tough times. I truly just wanted to serve and be the, the best that I possibly could be. Cause I felt like that's what everybody else deserved in a sense. Like you guys deserve, you guys, you guys needed the best Ramon Resop, Right. And so I, in my brain, I, I just kind of set it up as a challenge. Like I'm going to give them my best. Yeah. Uh, I owe, I owe it to them. Right. And I kind of felt that way in everything that I've done, just, you know, in my service to, you know, in my service in the Navy, you know, but personally, man, I just don't settle for, I just don't settle for less, man. Like I, I just refuse. Yeah. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to uh, not be prepared, right? Like I just physically, mentally, I just I don't know what's coming in the future. Yeah, this is crazy, and it's crazy, man. Because yeah, like back in the back in the day, dude. Like they used to make fun of me. Like they were like, I'd be running hills, you know, Marines, and I'd just be like like go navy i'd just be saying some shit in my head man i'd be saying it out loud and they're like what world is this guy from like a normal person you know bro i'm talking like 1998 like, yeah this isn't like this is just the way it's always been man i just every day i wake up and you have we have a choice every day we wake up to either have a shitty day or have a good day yeah, for sure. Our, our actions, I believe, dictate that, right? Like, if I walk in talking to anybody, even in my house with my kids, you know, my wife, right? like, if I'm a shitty and the I wake up with a bad attitude, everyone else has a bad attitude, yeah. right? Like, we see it, and and I don't like living that way. I like being happy. I like I like my I like the, the people around me to feel good, and and if and if I can play a part of that, if my attitude has something to do with that. If my attitude is going to help somebody be successful in each in their day or whatever it is that they're doing, you know, even if I'm helping somebody push their car down the street, right? Yeah. Like, bro, it doesn't have to be a Navy person. It can be anybody. anybody. Yeah. Right. Like I, I open the opening the door, help at Starbucks this morning. I'm picking up trash off the floor just because I know they're busy and they're working. Oh, for sure. It, yeah. Right. It, but it's that type of stuff, man, that I think, uh, for me, I think there's, you know, I just get a personal gratitude that I'm helping somebody, yeah. you know, and I don't, I don't, I've never looked for anything in or I don't ever, I don't ever expect anything ever. I don't want, I don't, I don't want anything. All I want is someone to be just a little bit better than they were before they met me or before they encountered me. Yeah. Just pay you know, it forward. That's right. That's exactly it, man. And I just love, I love that. I, I, I just like helping people. I truly do like 100%. And my attitude every day when I, I train, I, you know, I'm still, dude, I'm retired, bro. And I'm still five. Eight, yeah, I know. I see your, up, I like, see your Facebook yeah. post every morning, you on top of the mountain. And I feel like my kid, right. like my kid's <laughs> five years old. And I feel like he's just like a mini version of getting on Facebook and looking at your post. Cause every morning he's like, dad, it, the sun's up, get out of bed. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but just bro, every day. He's, you do yeah, that, I right? yeah I do. He's like, go shower okay, now, get out and feed right? me, and I'm like, all right, man, yeah. let's go. Come on, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, he's doing what I do. That's what yeah. I. That's it. That's all. It's all I'm trying to do, right? Like it's yeah. just, uh, it's just cool. It's just cool, man. I just, I just want to be the best that I can be. Want just a little bit better than I was yesterday, right? Like, uh, I'm not a crazy like nutrition guy. Like, I smash Oreos. I smash <laughs> pizza. Right? I, Drink beer. That's like everybody else, right? Yeah. But I know, I know that in my brain, I'm registered different. Like, you know, this stuff's not free, right? Like, you gotta pay the price for this. Oh shit, yeah. Dude. You don't get. You don't get. If you're gonna smash cookies, then you have to do 100 push-ups push afterwards. Yeah. The next day or not eat meat or something. Yeah. Right. You gotta you gotta pay the price for that stuff, right? So I I just you know I I think that perspective is huge. I think that perspective plays a lot of part in everybody's. Uh, how they're how they are every day, their motivation levels, you know, yeah. 
Um, I, I, I look at everything, you know, I'm not, I'm not a weirdo, man. Like I see the negative in things. Oh yeah. Like we all do. Like, yeah. We all do, but I decide to do something different. I don't look at that negative and that's not what I focus. I truly deliberately find a way to see the positive out of this, out of everything. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things like today's generation, you see it coming up with the, uh, younger people, the social media, the attached to the phones, the, Oh, woe is me. The world owes me something type people. And that's one of the things like I want to try and change with my kids and not everything's fair. Not everything's free. Everybody has to pay for things and you can't have everything. The, right. the instant gratification aspect of it is, is the biggest thing. Everybody wants something now and yeah. you can't have it right now. Like you have to work for it and it's not going to be free and it's not going to be easy. And that's, yeah. that's the biggest thing for me. Absolutely. And, but just like you said, you know, you know, this is generational, right? We're not, uh, we're not changing. Like us telling them, we're not, you know, do, I believe that the only way to us changing is being the example. Oh, like, for gotta sure. Show, yeah. I got to show my kids what if I want my kids to be a certain way. I don't see, I, I think I'm going to really stress myself out. And <laughs> if I did, if I did have hair, it would be worse. Right? But uh, I think I just I try to be the best example that I can. Right. And yeah. then just, I, I you're right, because it's not going to change you. It's not. We're not going to change a generation. We, we gotta. It's it's deliberate actions for each person that we encounter. You know, like the Navy. I, I loved it. I love. You know, be honest. I, I, these younger sailors that were, you know, people that were dealing with. We're the we're the old dinosaurs. You know, I am. You're not. Yeah. I'm the old dinosaur. Well, I mean, I got three more years and I can yeah. retire. So, like, I'm still yeah. there. Like, I'm I'm old to the people that are just coming in. Yeah, and but I just I like. I like where their our minds are. They're listening. I mean, the way that they talk, their ideas, as long as we listen to them, you know, I listen to my kids more than anything, man. I, yeah. you know, I just love the things that they had to say. And then I think I got a lot of that from the people that I, you know, being what we did in the Navy, what we did in the Navy. Right. So, yeah. um, but I just, I want to be the example for them, man. Like, it's pretty awesome when, when my little warriors are like, I have a six year old, a five year old and three year old. Right. Yeah. And they're pulling out yoga masks to do push-ups in our garage, <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, what's up? They're calling me out. They're like, yeah. Dad, come on. We're doing what's up? I'm like, okay, you hard, tough guy. Let's do it, man, right? Like, yeah. I, got the, I, got a, I got a heavy bag in here, too. So they're like, bah, bah, and they just, you know, they're calling me out. And yeah. damn, I love it. I love it, man. I love it, yeah. you know? And That's funny because, like, my kids will – uh, like one of the biggest, like my kids are uh, nine, five, and three. And what they do is they try and hurt me. And like, so they'll punch me or pull my hair or like poke me with something like, Dad, that hurt? You hurt that hurt? I'm like, no. And so, like, they're big, like, I just let them go ham so, so they can get it out. And like, they can realize like what, like what they're getting into. The, the biggest yeah. thing, like, I'm worried about is like when they can actually start throwing punches and then they're going to hit me, hit me. And I'm gonna be like, oh, yeah. shit, that one actually kind of hurt. <laughs> No, I get it. I, I get that right. I'm with you, man. My my boys are in karate right now, and they're just you know, ayo, ayo, and they're, I, you know, I talk about like being loud and focused, and yeah. you know, that's all I. And man, homeboy throws some mad punches right now. <laughs> he, he can't, can't, oh, I was like, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's why we have a bag for you. Like this is why we have a heavy bag. Like don't punch me in the face because he's on it's only six, bro. It doesn't feel good. Yeah, yeah no. Shot, <laughs> and he, I mean, he's stiff, dude. He's hard. Wow. Yeah. Like, wow, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, that's funny. But, uh, I mean, I, like I said, in, I mean, being the best example I can for as many people as I can. Yeah. I just feel I, I felt like. Uh, Maybe there's a shortage of that a little bit, you know, and I think it's needed. I think it's needed guys like you and I and, and other people that are kind of seasoned and a little bit older, but being the example for others to follow, you know, we, a lot of people do a lot of complaining about yeah. people, but yet really who is it that needs to change, right? Is it the, is it the, the culture and the generation that we're trying to change or is it maybe the person that deliberately has to make some just adjustments you don't have yeah. to change completely you just adjust yourself a little bit right adjust your settings a little bit to the left to the right right so um 
because I want to be old school, right? I want to <laughs> be like, trust me, trust me. I don't want to be old, but I, you know, that's not affecting me anymore. You yeah. know, you're not going to be as a leader. You're not as a leader. You're not going to be affected that way. Um, the father, the husband, you know, it's just that old school, tough, hard mentality in my mind. As much as I, it's, it's what I'm used to. I don't. I, I just, I don't know. Just be moto, man. Help as many as I can. Just yeah. Inspire people. Yeah. But I'm inspired by a lot of people. That's just it. Like, I honestly believe wholeheartedly that to truly, uh, to, if you think you're inspired, to inspire anybody, you have to be inspired. Be inspired. Like, yeah. You and I, we have to be inspired by somebody, right? So who inspires me, right? Like, that's, and then all I'm doing is just doing what, it is that I'm trying yeah. to be like them and it seems to help other people. Right? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's it, man. Like that's, I have a lot of people I look up to. Right. And, you know, military civilians, uh, younger, older, uh, and people, there's little bits and pieces of people that, man, that's like, you know, that's awesome. That's what I want to be like. Right. Yeah. Right? And, and then I just really deliberately try to do it. That's awesome. You know? and, and I think about it every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really think I'm a fucking weirdo, but I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not. Like, just, just listen to me. Just listen to me. Just listen to me. Just listen to me. That's funny. It's like, it's like, what's that all? Like, uh, when it was it was like a YouTube video where the little boy was like, listen, listen. It was a little, oh, listen, Linda, listen. Like, listen, Linda. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Linda, Linda, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm that guy, like that little boy, often. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, but now, so what's your transition like? What do you plan on doing afterwards? Mm. So I, you're blessed, man. I uh, was able to link up with this uh, total human performance organization. So it's called O2X. Uh-huh. And their headquarters out of Boston. Um, it's a, a total human performance company. And they focus on education and training of, uh, tactical athletes so o2x's interpretation or, or uh, uh, definition of a tactical athlete is are people that endure stress and hardship every single day of their lives right so we're talking firefighters police officers we're yeah. talking ems personnel we're talking dod personnel uh, people that have life and threat and life and death situations you know people that are just in a constant level of stress O2X is like the premier team that comes in and implants ourselves essentially inside these fire departments, police department, whoever will have us. Yeah. And we bring it all. We bring everything. We bring uh, resiliency training, sleep, you know, sleep, uh, sleep, how to sleep training. We bring, uh, because remember, in the, like even in the military, right? We see yep. this circadian rhythm, right? This lack of sleep. Remember this big, huge adjustment? Oh, this, yeah. Ships were crashing. Nobody had sleep, right? So this isn't just the military that encounter. It's the anybody that's in any type of a you know a high performance job like that, right? So um, they're bringing nutrition, physical conditioning. We've got a team just the best in the country when it comes to psychology, you know, mental health doctors. We're dealing with PTSD. And oh yeah, PTSD is huge, man. It's oh, not yeah. just the military. It's, military. it's also there. civilians, like. Uh, absolutely go, like my buddy he's in the new orleans uh fire department and okay. just like all the stuff that they that they do on a daily basis going out on casualty calls or car wrecks or uh yeah. fires and you have to go into and then you think about it like your your mind has to be there because if you have five kids and wife at home like and you're running into a fire like when you come yeah. out that can mess you up absolutely not Absolutely. It's traumatic for everybody. You know, what's traumatic to some is maybe not traumatic to others, but nonetheless, it's traumatic and it needs help. Right. And, and yeah. we, we live in this tough guy world, tough woman world, right. Where there's a, you know, maybe not so much now, not as much as it used to, but it was a sign of weakness. Right. If, if we felt like we were, we needed to take a break or something, if we said that. And, yeah. um, really trying to shift that paradigm. I think the paradigm has shifted in the Navy quite a bit or in the military, right? But it has to shift in the civilian world as well. Yeah. And because these 
when we focus on these things, these the nutrition condition, right? Believe it or not, fire firemen, right? Like you know, police on people. There's there's heart conditions out there. There, there's like people are sick, people are dying from surgeries, you know. So, O2X brings everything, they're bringing it, they're bringing, they're bringing in, you know, it's a, a an organization founded by a few prior seals, okay. and they have total, you know, human performance experts that come in, they run workshops, and they really just teach. We bring in experts, all right, and we plan ourselves inside these departments, and you know, the goal being that we have a O2X specialist inside them every single day yeah so because they didn't go to you know if that's right man because you know this like right I mean, you hear a seminar like or you just you come in and you speak once well then okay someone's moto for about two weeks and then they oh yeah they drop off right but what 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 it is this team oh check team is doing is that we want to bring in and plant ourselves permanently right find yeah. our place there and we're there every day we're doing total comprehensive analysis on every single person in the departments, right? And we're, who needs help where? What do we have to do to help them be the best that they can be so they can continue to perform at the highest level? Yeah. That's it. And, That's and awesome. man, I, I just, I, I, I had a friend tell me about the company and I, I, uh, I looked it up and it was just epic because <laughs> I, bro, I, I was so fired up about it because I never knew an organization like this existed. Yeah. Right? Like I live, I've lived this life of, <laughs> of, of all these things. And, and, and the whole time I'm getting ready to get out, everyone's like, what are you going to do, man? Like you need, need to have a YouTube channel. You got to have a podcast. <laughs> you got you to you gotta do all these things. Man, I don't know what to do. I have no yeah. idea what to do, right? And I just had a friend kind of connect me to this O2X team. And it is just, it couldn't be a more perfect fit for me. It really couldn't be. And anyone that knows, you know, this is like, it just is a true blessing. I just yeah. don't even know how. I'm still in awe that it happened. <laughs> um, I just, it, it, but no breaks, man. I don't, I'm not taking break. You know, I'm tired and i'm going right back again after it man yeah like but yeah, yeah so so it's legit man. and i'll be i'll be staying in california so that's I'll awesome be, i'll be uh headquarters is in boston and i went to go there and visit and it's just incredible just absolutely epic yeah. every single person it seems just incredible and um there's yeah but i'll be kind of the west coast Liaison, you know, I guess, at, asset manager, yeah. um, however you want to call it. But hopefully, the goal is to get you know out to is all over the East Coast right now, and yeah. they're really nowhere in California. I mean, there's a couple spots here and there. I'm gonna have to look into that. Growing, but I, uh, I'm now gonna be here. Yeah, oh, and that's I'm awesome, gonna be dude. the OTX, and it's my <laughs> goal. It's my goal to to, to bring. O2X to every single department there is because it literally it's it's you know tier one right it's tier one assets are coming in yeah. bring and make everybody amazing like that's the bottom line it is it's simply what it is if they'll have us we're coming and then yeah. that's what I'm, that's what my that's what my goal here in California <laughs> is to do is because I you know think about it though man like you know I'm right now I'm more curious about like what are what are what are current what are departments currently doing right now. Uh, probably like, nothing. Are, are, I mean, you hear all that know? stuff in the news, right? Uh, yeah. Everything, everything the fires, that the, dude, like, the fires, the everything that's going on with the the civil unrest, uh, everything that's going on. Like, what is America doing to train or get help to the to the police department, to the fire department, to the EMS personnel, to DOD civilians that are providing security for everybody? Um, and what kind of training are they getting, or what kind of help are they getting after something happens and they go through a riot or they go through a fire? Or, you know, there's fires up here that, that I just seen on the news uh, in Washington. And what are those people doing to, to get the help that they need? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And, and, and I don't know that answer right now. And yeah, this is I mean, like my goal. This is, this is where I want, I want to know what it is that they're doing, right? And, yeah. and I want to bring O2X because I guarantee you, I know without a doubt that O2X is better. It's the best there is, hands down. And yeah. I know that, and and it's like, and I get to be a part of the team that that brings it, right? And that's I'm so fired up now. You obviously can tell I'm so fired <laughs> up. Like, I'm like, 
<laughs> yeah, I never imagined. I never imagined that I get to do what it is I just truly love in my own life, um, and not do this for a career. You know, uh, just different. I did it in the Navy. Now I'm just doing yeah. it. I just, you know. So oh, for I'm sure. stoked, man. Like, I think the future should be good. Hopefully. Yeah. You no, know? that's awesome, man. I'm I'm so happy for you that you found something that you're really truly passionate about to do outside and once you get done with your hundred year enlistment that you've been in. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I know I look like I know I look like I'm, tw- I look like I'm 21, but I'm yeah, actually okay. 40, <laughs> I'm actually 43, bro. I'm actually 43. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But you know, I, I tell you, being home, man, it's just been awesome. Being with kids skin. And yeah, I bet and, you the boys are super happy that you're home. Oh stuck man. We're just, we had a lot of fun every day. Yeah. And uh it's been really nice being home, just rekindling, you know, reintegrating, because yeah. that definitely has to happen, being gone for that long. And then oh, yeah. home, there's lots of reintegration that people have to go through. And I can, we've gone through that, but we're solid. Right yeah. So it's been really good. Yeah, we're all super stoked. Well, good. What, uh, so bringing it back to your uh, military life, like talking about the wars, talking about uh, going to Iraq. Like, what are some of the, not so much like crazy or gruesome, but like some of the funny things that you like just remember from being out there, like kept you happy while you were, while you're out there in the <laughs> thick of it? Uh, I remember one story. I'm retired now, right? So it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. But uh, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Don't get me wrong. But so like for the initial invasion, uh, I was also personal security. Uh-huh. or the commanding officer so anywhere he left anytime he left the compound he did anything i had this big ass truck you know dually diesel awesome truck and i pretty much had my weapons or whatever but i took him everywhere he went right well <laughs> we're getting ready to leave we're retrograding we're done we're going we're out of there right yeah. someone else is coming in to punch further forward and uh we're convoying now so we got uh-huh. like in a Probably like a uh, 50 car convoy or a Humvee truck Jesus. convoy. Yeah. And we punch out Odar 30. I mean, super late, super dark out. And the desert out there is black. Yeah. Like black. It's just headlights. Right? Well, we're rolling out. Well, I got the command master chief in the back seat with me. <laughs> and I got the commanding officer right next to me, right? And, you know, it's, it's just it's two in the morning. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. You you just you know you drive have you you yeah. know you drive on that that dark road and oh, yeah. zone you know you just go into this tunnel vision. Well, we stop. We were of course we're lost. That's normal, right? Yeah. You're always lost <laughs> together. Like, so uh, and they're like, Doc, we are where we're at. Just stay a few minutes, right? So I pass out. I'm asleep. Yeah, I'm dead asleep. We're all we're all asleep in the car. For the truck, and I hear this tap on the window. It's Marie, like, oh, we're rolling. And I'm like, cool, let's roll. All right. And, you know, the cab is still asleep. Mash, she's still asleep. <laughs> and we're rolling, right? And I'm driving, dude. And I'm like, and I'm in, we're not a rat, all right? We're like, this isn't like, this isn't like uh, you know, uh, out here in Glamis or something in Cali, uh, right? So I'm like, I'm here, dude. And I'm just like, it's like, oh, like, I'm, 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 I'm going to sleep. I'm dozing off like hardcore and I'm trying. I'm like, I got the air conditioning way up, man. I'm like hitting myself in the head. I'm like punching myself in the leg. I'm trying to stay awake. And bro, I'm out. And all I remember, all I remember is this boom, 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 boom. I wake up. I'm completely off of the road. And we're driving up and down. Oh, right that's now. funny. Like, oh, shit. The commanding officer wakes up. And he's like, what the fuck's going on? What's going on? I'm like, did you see that animal on the road? Did you see that animal on the road? He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, there was, there was like a bunch of coyotes or something. I had to go around them or whatever. And he's like, what? I, like, I, had to go. I had no idea. I totally, I was I'm pretty sure I was dreaming, right? But he, that Master Chief, Master Chief knew what was up, dude. He oh, knew yeah. was he's like, he he's sweet, like, yeah. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't say a word. He's just laughing back there. The CEO totally bought it, man. He's like, oh, good. All right. I'm glad we're good. We're good. I pulled the shit back on the road. I was like, oh. Oh, man. I, I remember that, man. I was out. I was dead asleep. Right. In that rag, yeah. But nobody got hurt. We were good. 
Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, no, that was one. That was one of the funny times. Uh, man, there are a couple different times, man. Um, I remember you telling me the story when we were eating. Uh, y'all were like playing poker or something, and y'all. Oh shit! That day was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that day was a wild day, dude. Like, yeah. so we're sitting in the. Like, all right, so we're like in the little city or whatever in Iraq. And this is the second one, right? Yeah. So we're, uh, we're like fighting. We're fighting now. And uh, we were in this forward operating base, like little school building, essentially, that we kind of took over with our base. And uh, it was ours. And we weren't, you know, there's everyone's got outline pieces to so space that we're trying to cover in combat and so forth. And we're in the city and. Uh, I'm sitting in this room and I'm actually playing rummy. Like it's yeah. the middle of the afternoon, right? And, you know, <laughs> like, and I'm in my little silky, I'm in my silkies and t-shirt, you know, flip flops. And other two buddies of mine, my Marines, are sitting there in their, you know, shorts or whatever. We're playing rummy, and I hear this cat, cat, cat off in the distance, right? It's 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 AK, like it's fire, like it's yeah. fire, but it's really far away, and so we don't even we don't even pay any mind to it. I'm like ah, whatever. Like we heard it all the time. It was no big deal. It meant nothing to us, right? So we're just like, well, somebody's in contact. Cool. Remember, you know, we're still playing with you, whatever. And and do it. And then uh, and then it starts getting louder. Like the crap, the snap is getting louder. And if it's getting louder, it means it's getting it's closer. closer. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So man, I'm like, yo, I'm like, dude, it's getting louder. Man. It's kind of loud, bro. And he's like, ah, oh, shut up, Doc. You know, whatever. <laughs> could be, in a, you know, could be a fuck, whatever. I'm like, you guys, it's getting louder. This, I don't know that this is a good thing. This isn't a good thing. Uh, they just keep brushing me off. Like, it's no big deal. And I'm like, oh, man. And I remember getting up to the, so we were on the corner of this building and across the street. I go, we had a window, I think it was like on the east, east corner of the, of the compound of the east outer. Anyway, I look at this window and do no shit. I look out the window and there's a dude, RPG. Jeez. <laughs> oh, it's just like an RPG right Good in the center night. of our, RPG right in the center. I watch this dude shoot right to the center of our compound. Good and night, it's just man. like, that oh, is bananas. hell broke. Oh, <laughs> hell broke loose, dude. And the whole time we're like, I'm yelling at him. I told you. I was like, I told you. We could have been ready for this. I was like, we're all trying to get dressed. We gotta, yeah, man. We gotta put our whole, you know, we gotta put our whole kit on. And everyone's like, just they're, they're cussing at me. I'm cussing at them. I'm like, I told you this was gonna happen. I I, I, I could have prevented this shit. I, you know, I'm like, but you know, anyways, we ended up getting dressed and you know, got all off. And I was part of an advanced trauma life support team. We had a small, we still teamed up with some army medics, yeah. and army PA. Um, and there were some, there were some soldiers that had, that had been hit. And so in my, in my Humvee, we, uh, uh, which is crazy. I had a, my gunner, you know, a 50 cal gunner. Yeah. You know, I had my we had JTAC. So we, we were talking to air control. That's what we did. Like controlled all the air on station. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, put warheads on foreheads, pretty much what we did. But nice. So I got my, you know, we're on a guy and they're calling, they're calling for the, they need doc. Like, we got people down. So they're calling for docs and we're trying to make our way through the city. And uh, we finally get to the, we find out we, we, we coordinate a location just on the outskirts of the city and we get in there and we pull up, they pull up and everybody comes pretty much together at the same time and the casualties are out we go to work you know doing the things that we do to you know keep them keep them good to go um and then you know we you know you, we call a medevac he comes in and we're dropping smoke to mark our location where to pick us yeah. up yeah yo like i wanted like i told i remember i remember talking to one of the officers like put smoke like 100 yards like 100 yards away <laughs> like right next to us please right and Yo, I don't know where the miscoms happened, but smoke ended up going like 500 yards away. Oh, right? wow. So it was you like, had to hump all those people and, out there. Oh, no, dude. Uh, we were humping these people out. So check this out. <laughs> like, I freaking, I got, the, so we got these casualties and I have, I'm in a hatchback like Humvees. I can't even put them in there. Like we're packed with stuff. We got, I couldn't fit them inside. So um, I told one of my readers, I was like, we're putting this dude on the hood of the fucking Humvee, bro. <laughs> I am, there was a dude on a stretcher, um, a soldier, yeah, night. 
on the Hover Humvee. I'm standing on the wheel well, holding this dude down. So a Marine is on the other side, and we're driving. Oh, get this Hilo, bro. To get this. It was the sickest thing ever, man. And it was like, it was unreal. It was super unreal. It was, but it was, we did what we had. There was no way we we're going to hump this dude. Like this, no. carrying this dude, like it was mud patty. It was brutal. Like we got to get a truck for this. So we just ended up adapting our come, baby. So, we did. so yeah, got him a helo. And he ended up being okay. It was a good day. That's awesome. But so, I don't yeah, so you... it started out funny. It was all crazy, but yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want to keep you up too late, man. Um, but I got one last question before we leave. Okay. All right. Shoot. So you've been a you've been a doc for um, twenty year twenty plus years, right? So would you rather stub your toe on the coffee table and rip it clean off, or rip your own tooth out? Which one would I rather do? Yeah, like you wake up oh. in the middle of the night to go take a leak. You hit the edge of the bed. I'll rip smash your pinky my toe. foot, bro. I'll rip my whole toe off. <laughs> you know, I would, I, I don't, I'd rip my whole toe off. There's no way I could pull something out of my mouth. No way. Like, you know, no way. Funny. Absolutely. I'd rip my toe off, man. Like, dude, I, I, had a, I had a cat once on one more story before we go. I had a cat yeah. that showed up in my on the mind seats. We were underway in the CD, and he showed up, and he was like, uh, oh, come out his mouth wide open. It's like, oh, I think something's wrong. And he had a bridge. You know what a bridge is? Yeah. Like that, yeah. Uh, on the inside of your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Boy, it had, it had snapped away and was pointing. It was sticking out of his mouth. Oh, shit. He's got, he's like, <laughs> I'm no dentist, man. I don't yeah. know what's up. So I'm like, oh, shit, bro. I was like, ah. ah. I brought him in. I was like, damn, what do I do? I, I didn't know what to do at this point. You know, he's got a bridge sticking out. So I was like, uh, I brought in help, and I was like, "Just hold his head as, as we're <laughs> underway." So the, the ship is doing this. Right? Yeah. the ship is everywhere. So I had somebody like holding his head, and I had a pair of pliers, bro. And Get I was, out of like, town. In this dude, that swear to God, bro. I mean, in this dude, bro. and I snap and I clip it like as close as I could to the gut to his cheek. Yeah, yeah. And I snap it off, and we were pulling into port like two days later. I was like. Chew some gum. Keep this gum as close as you can on that, so that little line doesn't <laughs> They'll, your mouth. Yeah, yeah. But uh, oh, I was like, imagine like, <laughs> like when you lay with your mouth wide open. Right? That's funny. And my big gorilla hounds <laughs> diving in your mouth. No, I wouldn't touch my teeth. I wouldn't touch my teeth ever in a million years. I'd rather rip my own arm off. So that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> uh, I love it, man. Oh man. Well, no, I appreciate you coming out. Uh, I know it's late over there. It's late here. Uh, spending some time with me is good catching up and getting to know you a little bit better. Um, yeah. but so O2 into, if you don't know anything about it, go check it out. I'm sure that we'll put it up on the website so that if you are a uh, firefighter, police, EMS, or whatever it is that you can get in touch with somebody, if you need some O2X. help. O2X. 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 O2 into O2X uh, human performance. Yeah, there we go. And then, uh, as always, you can find us on, uh, two dummies in a podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or or you can email us at two dummies podcast at gmail.com. All right, Ramon. Yeah, I love Jesus. you, bro. Love you too, man. I'm coming on again. I want to talk to Lucas. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, Bob. I love you.